Hey there, everyone. Welcome to Connection Points. Pastor Dennis with you today. And today we're going to start a new series and a new study on the book of Ephesians. And um, as we as we launch into this, we have just finished um, going through the entire book of Acts. And so uh, that's on YouTube now uh, if you want to take a look at that. But we're going to we're going to look at the book of Ephesians because um, one of the places that the apostles, the apostle Paul spent a long time during his ministry in the book of Acts was in the city of Ephesus. And it was in that city um, where he spent at least a couple years. Um, he basically used that as a hub to then go around to all the other um, the, all the other area there in Asia Minor and and basically evangelize. And so he writes the book of Ephesians back after having been there. Um, he writes it back to them from Rome once he is imprisoned. It's one of the uh, what we what is referred to as a prison epistle, um, and and it just it simply epistle means letter, and it's a letter that was written from prison while he was in Rome, um, where he wrote several other letters uh, that we now have in the New Testament. But this book of Ephesians, I think, is is a very important one um, for several different reasons. The book of Romans really is the the treatise that uh, that he wrote that ultimately um, captured pretty much everything there is to know doctrinally about uh, Christianity. And so the book of Ephesians, though, if you look at it in an outline form, it's basically a short version. Uh, or a condensed version of the book of Romans. And so in this very short book, relatively speaking, uh, the Apostle Paul captures an enormous amount of not only theology, uh, Christian doctrine, pla- practical Christian living, um, how to deal with spirits, how to live in the spirit realm, um, how to uh, live with others, racial racial uh, reconciliation is is in there, marriage is in there. There's just so much packed into this book. And so we're just going to unpack it a little bit at a time um, and and just work through it because these are called connection points. And ultimately, my purpose here is to help us connect with God through connecting in the Word. And so when we connect in the Word of God through studying the Bible, uh, I believe that that connects us to God so that we can then take that word and apply it into our lives. And so um, as we study through this, I just want you to understand that's that's my goal, is to equip you with the word so that you can use the word in your life. And so we're going to just start out in verse 1. Verse 1 says, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God. Now, Paul often started his his letters that way because he was establishing the authority from which he's writing. He is an apostle, and an apostle is one who is uh, sent by God. That's what apostle literally means. It means one who is sent by God, and he is sent on mission. And the mission of an apostle is to change the culture that you're sent to into the culture that you're sent from. So that word apostle actually wasn't a Christian word to begin with. It was a it was a Greek word that is borrowed that that then Christian uh, Christianity basically took over. But ultimately, it started with Alexander the Great. Um, when Alexander the Great would go and conquer a land, conquer um, a city or a town. Um, or, or whatever kind of region he conquered, because that's what he did um, during during the time that the Greeks were basically running the world. Um, Alexander the Great would would conquer a land. They would go through with the military, and they would uh, take over. But then the next wave of Greek soldiers or Greek uh, military unit that would come in would be referred to as the apostolic unit. They're, they're, they were apostles. And really what their purpose was, or their mission was, was to come in to whatever culture that might have been, whether that was in uh, in Egypt, or in Africa, or in Israel, or wherever it might be, they would come in after being conquered, 
the apostolic military uh, wing of the Greek military would come in and they would set up a new culture. And so they set up things like a road system, uh, mail system, communication. They changed the language. It's called the, it's, the, the process is actually called Hellenization. It's to make it Hellenistic, which is what that life, uh, that, that culture was referred to as, the Hellenistic culture. And so um, Alexander the Great's uh, goal, mission, was to take over the world and to change or convert the rest of the world into Greek. And, and that's what he tried to do. In his relatively short life, he died at 33 years old, um, in, in his relatively short life, he had an incredible impact on um, especially that, that area of the world. Um, the Greeks took over through his leadership, uh, basically all of Asia Minor down into Africa, Egypt, and um, and then ultimately the Romans would take over after that. But this idea of apostleship really came from uh, Alexander the Great trying to convert everything to Greek. And then when Jesus came along and, and started talking about um, the mission of his disciples, who he ultimately made into apostles, the, the goal of those apostles was to convert the people of this world in the culture of this world into the culture of the kingdom, the kingdom of God. And so the, the apostles, that was their mission. The teaching of the apostles was to convert uh, from the, the thinking and way of living of this world in this world, right? In, in the gospels, it says you are in the world, but you are not of the world. And, and really that's a, that's an apostolic, um, saying or or an ap apostolic phrase uh, saying where you are is not what you're of because what you're of is of the kingdom and so the apostles came to convert people to the kingdom and that's what the apostle Paul declares in all almost all of his opening statements is he, he declares that he is an apostle and there to change that culture and so he's and and then he identifies who he's writing to he says to God's holy people in Ephesus, the faithful in Christ Jesus. So he points out the city that he's writing to, uh, and, and Ephesus was a large city, probably about a quarter million people. Um, it was a walled city. It had um, walls all around it. And so uh, if you went outside those walls and to the people that, that were there, it was, it was even larger than that. So it was a very large city, second only probably to Rome. Um, in in size and and close to the same as maybe Alexandria in in Egypt, which was another big city during that time. So the Apostle Paul goes to the population centers, and and that's where he spends most of his time because he knows that if he can if he can uh, uh, bring the kingdom into those large population centers then the people that are coming and going out of there and the influence that he can have there um, is going to spread throughout the world, which it ultimately did. But that's very similar to how we do things even now today, you know, with politicians, when they, when they go on the campaign trail, they go to large cities, they go to pl uh, population concentrations where there are a lot of people together because you're not only speaking to those people that, that are there, um, but you're going to speak to all the people that they go and speak to as well. And it, and it spreads that way. And then the Apostle Paul uses this as a greeting. And, and uh, it's a very important one. He, in verse 2 it says, Grace and peace to you from God, our, from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now that word, grace, and th that phrase, grace and peace, was a... Um, it, it was it, shalom was a common Jewish way of speaking, way a way of greeting. But the grace part, the grace is what the Apostle Paul um, kind of hangs his hat on because he knows that the whole idea of us hearing from God in this way, us receiving Christ, uh, the the Son of the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, is because of grace. 
And this grace that he brings is what ultimately gives us the ability or the, the opportunity now to receive the, what he's going to unpack in the rest of this letter, uh, which is going to equip us to live out the life that he's called us to. So I, I just want to pray for you um, to, to finish up this one today and and just to um, I just want to invite you to to read the book of Ephesians and and then we're going to unpack it a little at a time but as we do it, it's good to it's good to see the big picture and to understand the magnitude of of the meat that the Apostle Paul is packing into this so that we can understand that our goal is to change and be transformed from what we are to who God wants us to be. In other words, from being a worldly person to being a kingdom person. And so I just I want to pray for that. Father, we just thank you that we have the opportunity to study your word together, to know that you're word is true and that it is powerful and it is effective in transforming our lives into what you have created us to be. And we thank you for that in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Thanks for being with me, everyone. We'll see you soon.